do you fill out one of these PCGS forms to get your 2019 San Francisco Enhanced Reverse Silver Proof Eagle sent out? We'll let you know. Silver Steeler here. And Winning Image Photography. I'm here with my local coin shop guy, Kurt Plowman, and he's going to guide us on this PCGS form on getting one of these 2019 Silver Eagles graded out, the enhanced one. You've heard a lot about them, haven't you? I'll tell you what, guys. The entire world of numismatics is on fire right now with this uh, the 2019S Enhanced Reverse Proof with COA. Uh, the, the hottest item, of course, is a sealed one in box. Don't touch it. Don't open it. Don't unwrap it. And you got a gold mine. You paid $69 from the mint. And then you find out when it arrives, it's $690 and up. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen them starting at $690, $700, uh, sight unseen, and now I think as of today, right now, there are dealers out there offering $900 and $1,000 if you haven't opened the box. Easy. Um, there are other dealers that are saying, hey, if you've opened the box and we're for sure it's a signed COA, we'll still give you $800, $700. It's very subjective as to what you're going to get for when you sell it on the second market right now, but what you really want to do with a coin like this, especially if you're going to collect it, is get the thing protected right now. Now, a lot of people will say, don't open the box 30 years from now. The box will be worth more if it's unopened. Of course, that's a gamble. Me, myself, I prefer the more sure thing, which is having something great and certified right away. So, you know, when Winning Axe asked me if I would help her with filling out the form, I said, well, sure, we can definitely talk about that. And that's how we ended up here. So when you decide to send a coin in for submission, there are a lot of companies out there. Of course, everybody knows the PCGS, NGC, the arm wrestle between the big two. Uh, ANACS is out there as well, and then there's a lot of third party and fourth party and fifth party or third tier, fourth tier, and fifth tier grading companies that are out there. Of course, as, as a dealer, I highly recommend you use PCGS or NGC. They're the two most reliable, the two most noted. They're the oldest in the industry and the strongest. ANACS, yes, they've been around for about the same amount of time, but the reality is, is everyone knows that when you go to sell it, an item that's been graded by ANACS, it's still considered somewhat subjective. They are the least expensive of the big three. If it comes down to cost and you have to choose between the two which you're going to choose, choose NGC. If you want the best return on your value and you want the strongest grading, and in my opinion, the most value for your money, go with PCGS. So today we're going to look at filling out the PCGS submission form. A lot of people nowadays are doing things online. Filling it out online is very simple and very easy. It is step by step. Once you've enrolled in your membership and you've chosen which level of membership you want, you follow the step by step instru uh, submission instructions and it will auto populate most of the information you're going to need to fill out. It'll have your submission numbers. It will auto populate a submission number for you because each submission has to have a digit tied to it. When you do it online, it automatically completes that. If you fill out the form yourself, if you print it off at home, you're going to have a couple of options. First of all, if you print it out and you have Adobe Acrobat, a newer version of it, it will give you the option to where you can actually click on each field of the form and type in all of your requests. There are even toggle bars for each and every one of these actual forms. And I had it pulled up. Uh, it looks like I closed it down, but I was going to show you um, where you can actually toggle through the entire form and fill it out yourself and then hit print and then you just have to sign it and attach your form. If you have the ability to do that, that's actually much better. PCGS, while they are, of course, the most reputable, they're also the most stringent when it comes to filling out your form. It's very important that your form be filled out correctly and legibly. Some people, like myself, although we've been gifted with a great many things, beautiful handwriting is not one of them. <laughs> I look more like a doctor who's been smoking, crack, drinking, and just came off of a 15-hour surgery shift. So... Basically, my handwriting is very, very difficult to read if I'm not very slow in paying attention. I also tend to write quickly. I try to write as quickly as my brain wants to work. And as if you've noticed through videos, I sometimes think faster than I can speak. Now, translate that into handwriting and it comes out kind of ugly. So if you have the ability to use the online or Adobe to click on it, either one of those, either using the online submission, I suggest that. If not that, using the uh, Adobe to auto-populate and type it in, you have a beautiful, perfectly typed in form. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to fill it out by hand, or you're old school like a lot of us are, you print the form off or you get a couple of copies from your local coin shop like myself. We provide them for customers all the time. Then you're going to fill it out by hand, which brings us to the actual form. 
When you print the form off, you're going to have two pieces of paper from PCGS, which is who we're talking about today. You're going to have the actual submission form itself and the instruction sheet and insurance rates. A lot of people think that this is just extra fodder and throw it away and don't keep it and don't look at it when they go to fill this out. It's actually very important because it has the rate chart you're going to use to calculate how much it's going to cost you to get your coin graded and the tier at which you're going to want to send it in. So the instructions that are on here, you'll notice they're pretty small print. Again, another good reason for the computers, you can actually blow that print up and read it or let it guide you through instructing things. Most importantly today, since we're applying this for a very specific coin, we're going to give you instructions on that particular coin. So filling out the form itself, the basic information you need to know is you're going to need to generate a form, a number up here, okay? Now, the, P, the Adobe version or the online version will automatically generate a number, which I use Adobe on my computer, so I typed one in just so you can see what it looks like. You have to put a number up here that's unique. Now, this number is not a submission number for PCGS. This is a random set of seven-digit number that you use to track the item, okay? Now, this has absolutely nothing to do with PCGS. Um, this has to do with when your form is uh, sent in, they're going to assign it to something, and this is the name they give it, because they're not going to put it necessarily under this name, okay? This, that's their in-house tracking. Um, after December of this year, I've been told this may be going away, but if you're submitting it this month, you'll still want to do this, okay? This form is going to change. The next thing you're going to need to know is your member name and number. Now remember, no matter whether you are with PCGS or NGC, you are going to have to join their club. Depending on the level you join will determine what benefits you get and of course what some of your costs will be with the actual grading of the coins. So when you fill this out, you do have the option of joining the club. So if you have not, you would actually check mark this little box right here, okay? And then you would select whether you're going to be a silver, gold, or platinum level. Um, obviously, this doesn't have dealer level information on it. Those of you who are dealers, who have thought about becoming PCGS dealers, there's a whole different set of that um, criteria, so we won't talk about that today. Most important things you're going to get, silver is their baseline. You have to join. That's where you start. So you know you've spent $69 if you're not already a member. Okay. If you want a few more uh, inexpensive or free uh, submissions, for the economy, you would go with the gold level. And if you want all the bells and whistles and all the additional things you can get along with additional submissions and online tracking and discounts to things like TrueView, you would go with the gold or, or with the platinum level. So for today, we would probably just choose the silver since this is the first submission and we don't know if we're going to be sending in a lot of coins for the next right. year. Okay, so we would select the silver. And I'm going to use a scratch paper here just so we can work from it, okay? And I've jotted down already 2019S. This is just for my notes. You can see my beautiful handwriting. Doesn't that look like it came right out of one of those books? What not to do. Don't teach your children to write like this. So we know so far we've spent $69, okay, because we didn't have a membership. I'm, of course, hypothesizing here with winning image uh, photography. So um, the next thing we're going to do is fill out the shipping information. That's just like it says, your name, address, information. I highly recommend you put your email on there because that will allow them to update you with email notifications. If you don't put that on there, you won't get the email notifications. Do they send you a picture of the coin? Well, that will come down to whether or not you select to have that done or not. Um, okay. They'll send you a notice, depending on the level of membership, that's one of the bells and whistles we talked about earlier. Okay. Yeah, so um, if you want everything and you want to go all the bells and whistles, go with the Platinum and then you won't miss out on anything. But keep in mind that some of the things are still going to cost um, because in addition to the grading fees, you have the additional bonus features kind of thing. It's kind of like uh, buying a car. You might get a new car for ten grand. you are going to get a new car with power steering for twelve grand. You might get a new car with a CD player and power steering bells and whistles and the thing is that got autopilot for $50,000. So the more you pay for, the more you get, but you're still technically paying for it in the long run. So keep that in mind. Um, I also tell people that are new to grading, um, that you're going to want to also weigh whether or not you think you're going to be grading more coins. If you're going to grade more than 10 coins within a year, I would recommend going with the middle level subscription they call theirs gold. Um, and that's whether or not you're going with PCGS or NGC. If you're going to do more than 10 coins a year, go ahead and get the better one. Yes, it's $16.90 a coin that you've added to the cost. Okay, if you break that up over 10 coins. But once you get to that 11th, 12th, 13th, 15th coin, now you're cutting those costs down. At 10 coins, you're kind of like drawing the line. 10 coins is still kind of eh. If I'm going to do more than 10 coins, now I'm cutting that cost per coin down. And that is one thing that it does is it also gives you the 
the thought that, hey, I've got more coin submissions for my, my freebies. Um, I've also got slightly better um, perks involved with the Gold Double membership. So, right. And I don't want to go into all those details because as a dealer, I don't necessarily look at those myself. And they do change those deals periodically. So read the fine print before you select which one's going to work best for you. But you get more options, more choices, and more free submissions each time you step up. Okay. Right. So after step number two, we go to number three, which is the alternate return shipping. Okay, so God forbid you have a post office box or you live in a rural route where your mailman sometimes doesn't deliver to you and you use something else like a post office box or maybe you're going to go on vacation in the next three months and there's a possibility you'll have your mail stopped or return. You would at that point in time want to use an alternate shipping. That's why this is provided. So um, there are times when people can't get stuff delivered to their home for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and this gives them a second place to ship it if necessary, okay? Um, again, when you go to fill this out, if you have an account number, you would fill it in there. This is not necessary. If you're, you know, if you're going to be around or you're going to have a friend around, um, you don't need to, to ship that out, okay? Um, it's basically if you're using a alternate shipping returns, then you have to provide your own account number and insurance coverage, and it's a lot more rigmarole. But if you're a guy who goes on vacation a lot or you're doing a lot of submissions, you know about this and you'll use it. Otherwise, you're going to actually bypass this step, okay? Um, the next step would be for PCGS, you want to leave this blank completely because what they're going to do is they're going to fill in the service level that they've agreed to do, the quantity of coins, the division they're working on it, the order number. This will be a number they'll assign to it and the box number they'll assign to it. The item number applies primarily to this order as an item. Um, and then the uh, inventory type, which is what kind of material it is you're sending. Uh, and they, they have different numbers that they use in-house. We don't mess with that. And then they'll mark the date that they received the item. That does not necessarily mean the day that they got it in the mail. It means the day that their receiving department acknowledged that the order has now in process or now being started. Okay? That'll all be in-house. And you won't ever see that again, but that's what that's for. Service group. So this is where it comes into what kind of coin you're going to be grading. Are you going to be using a U.S. standard coin? A U.S. gold shield coin, this is, you know, a plus $5 per coin extra. A world modern coin, meaning non-gold shield, okay. World gold shield, which is $5. So when we're talking about the gold shield, we're talking about the designation on the, on the holder uh, of a gold shield designator, okay. Um, coins requiring gold shield are non-U.S. coins that are submitted under any service other than standard modern. Okay, so this would be a U.S. gold shield coin. Okay, because it will not qualify as a standard coin. Standard coins would be normal business strike or normal normal proof strike, things that we're not looking for anything unusual. Okay, so then we're going to go on to step number five, which is the type of submission. We're wanting to submit this coin for grading. Okay, this is a new coin that's not been graded before. The other things that are on here, regrading is, let's say I've got this coin from PCGS and they've graded this coin and they put stuff on here that I don't agree with. Either I think the coin should grade higher, or I saw something that they didn't, or I really want to take a gamble and see if I can get this to go from a 68 to a 69. Okay? So that would be a regrade of the same coin. Crossover would be taking it from another coin grading company and crossing it over into a PCGS holder. Okay? Then reholdering, let's say I've got this beautiful coin and I'm going to pretend like this is a, 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 a St. Gaudens that's a, graded as a 70 and it's a really high dollar coin. And I was letting a customer look at it and they dropped it on the counter and it cracked the corner. Well, I need the coin. I don't need it regraded. I already like the grading. I don't want to change anything. I just want it reholdered. That's where that happens. You take it back. They use a sonic unwelder to unweld the coin, break it out carefully under protected circumstances and reholder the coin. And then a guarantee resubmission. We won't talk about that because that's a whole other thing. Reconsideration. Literally, I'm saying, is this coin worthy of being upgraded? Is mm -hmm. this, you know, that's not the same as regrading. It's re reconsideration. It's saying, I'm just questioning it. Please take a second look. I'm willing to pay for it. I want you to take a second look. Full numeric grade. They're automatically going to have a full numeric grade unless for some reason the coin does is not capable of receiving a full numer numeric grade. Some people receive coins that say VG details or XF details. Those wouldn't be worth doing this to, but let's say you get a coin that says MS details, surface altered, and you want a number, you could request them to put a number on there if they did not. Okay? And then um, these down here are if you're going to do unusual types of things, like you're going to go, you want to get a plus only, like a 65 to a 65 plus. 
So let's say I wanted this to go from 68 to 68 plus. I'm just going to check mark it. It's plus only. Okay. I want to check the suffix. Uh, if you want to do anything else weird or different, they've given you a place to mark that. That's so that whoever receives this can say, what do they want done with the coin? Genuine with details. Now this applies to coins that you're going to check. Is it um, only one per order form? Meaning are you going to, you want this particular coin to be genuine. I just want to know, is it real? I don't need a numeric grade, okay? Obviously, we want everything to have a numeric grade. So you would you'd want a full numeric grade, right? And it's defaulted that it should be done. Genuine is, let's say you get a 16D and you know that it's going to be below an, an AU or AG. It's not going to be about good. This poor puppy's been worn through the, through the mill. It's got no rim left. The coin weighs way light, but you can still see the 16 and the D. You want to guarantee its authenticity. That's where you would use the genuine details. Um... And then you could mark whether you want it holdered or not. I recommend if you're going to send it in, get it holdered because anything that comes back in a body bag, in my opinion, isn't graded anyway. So mm. yeah, that's just a me thing. No, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Service level. Now, this comes down to, we've told them we want the coin graded. We want a numeric grade on it. Now we're going to say, what all else do we want to do with the coin? Now, are we going to just do standard grading or are we going to look at Walkthrough, rarities, express, regular economy, modern, modern gold, or modern errors, all this stuff. These are all different things you can do. This is the bells and whistles. So you bought the car. Okay. Now, what are you going to do once you've bought the car? Do you want to get the coin something special? Today, we want to do a couple things. Okay. So for starters, we know that this is not going to be um, an economy coin because we want to get it back kind of quick and we know it's going to be worth more than 300 bucks. Okay. But there's also a possibility that we may not be able to do Express. Um, we could we could attempt to do an Express and pay for the Express, and we might get Express, okay? But we're also going to have to do an other because we want to have the uh, reverse uh, enhanced proof with the COA, which we'll need to fill that out on this line. So we could select Express as our actual, you know, add-on grading. That's 65 additional dollars on the coin cost. So let's say today we were going to go with Express. We add the $65, okay? Now, we're going to click down here all the way. All this other stuff you can read. There's all kinds of other different things. There's show specials. There's uh, economy show. Like if you're actually at a show and you want the coin turned around the next day or you don't mind waiting, you know, two to three weeks or three to four months to get your coin back. Those are all little boxes. You can read those details. They're pretty self-explanatory. But if you're not sure, you can always read over here or you can always call PCGS and they'll explain the differences. Some of them won't, won't apply. So if you're not at a show... There's no point in filling out anything that has to do with the show. So just ignore all of that. Um, if you're at the show, you would only look at the show special stuff. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So they created this one form, so it's always the same form, whether they're at home, whether they're at a show, whether they're doing remote grading, no matter what they're doing, it's the same form all the time so that their people in-house don't have 10 forms to look at. Right. That's what this is. What that means for us is that there's a lot of times you're going to overlook a lot of stuff. You just bypass it. So for today, with what we're doing, we're going to select these two categories, okay? We're going to try for Express and hope they do it within five days. We're paying extra. They probably will, especially since right now there's lots and lots of people who are doing the same thing. I wouldn't hold my breath exactly to five days, although they're saying it's five days. Five days means the grading part, not how long you'll get it back. All right. Okay? All of these numbers have to do with the turnaround time in business days from the time they receive the coin to the time they decide to ship you the coin. Okay? So if it says 5 days, 14 days, 20 to 30 days, that's from the time they start the process to the time they package it and put it in a box and send it to you. Now, then you got to add to that how long it took you to get it to them and how long it took for them to get it to you once it, got, once it left their hands. So that's why it takes so long. And then to top all of that off, if you do anything that's economy... These numbers, of course, are always estimates. I will tell you that I have sent in economy coins that have taken four months. Just Ouch. because they're so busy and it happens at the wrong time. If I send in coins right before the St. Louis show or the fun show in Florida, I'm going to be waiting. And we're looking at a coin that could devalue... Quickly. Quickly, because of the hoopla that's involved with this might die down. And we want to get this coin in there, submitted, yeah. through, the, through it all as fast as we can. Yep. So, you know, at this point in time, you're talking about less than 10% additional cost on this coin to get it turned around quickly. I would, rec I would, since you are choosing to get the coin graded, I would send it off. Okay. So then down here, you're going to actually have to fill this out to where it actually says um, reverse proof. 
um, enhanced with COA. It's important you write that on there. If I write it right now, you won't be able to read it, but you get the idea. This needs to be written on there because you also want that. You need that, okay? That is a special treatment. What is that special treatment? Well, we're going to talk about that for just a second. That special treatment is going to be how the coin is going to come back to you. For today, I've grabbed a large coin, obviously, the same uh, diameter coin. So this is a PCGS holder, okay? And this PCGS holder, as you can see, is the, the typical hard plastic sonic welded holder, which will have designators on it. We already know this isn't the right coin. I'm using this for illustrative purposes, okay? You'll get the coin back in a holder like this, okay? Because we're choosing to add the COA, you're also going to get the coin back with the COA sealed. You'll get this coin back in the holder, just like I showed you. You'll also get this sonic welded holder, which has the COA with the signature of David Ryder in there, okay? Your numbers obviously will be down here at the bottom because your COA has its own numbers. They will match the numbers that are listed up here, okay? So you see you're getting all of that. Now, this is what you will get when you send it off to PCGS. If you choose to send it off to NGC, using their forms, you would get a coin that will come back in this kind of a holder, the same sonic welded holder that NGC uses all the time, and then you will get it back in a semi-rigid plastic box like this, okay? And for today's purposes, you can kind of see this is what it'll look like, and it'll have been sonic welded across the top and sonic welded across the bridge here, all right? It will contain the designator at the top here, the barcode, which will match the barcode on your coin, and the information that's on here. When you flip the coin over, or flip this actually over, you'll see the other side where it has the signature this way with the coin unfolded like that, or the card unfolded like this. And the COA number, that's this number down here, will be right up there, okay? So the differences between the two is NGCs, they have unfolded the COA, so you can see both insides and outsides simultaneously by flipping it over like this. Okay, and when you look at PCGSs, you end up with this being the front, and when you reverse it over, you'll see the outside, um, and the COAs will match here. So the difference, of course, is that the semi-rigid isn't quite as heavy a duty a holder. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's NGC, so if you're an NGC fan, that's what you'll get. If you're a PCGS fan, this is what you'll get. Well, there are a little bit of plus and minuses to it, because with the PCGS, you never see the middle of that COA again. Right. Whereas with NGC, you see both sides. But well, it's not in as a good of a holder as PCGS, sort of. Right. I, and, I, you know, the, the, the term good of a holder is kind of subjective because it depends on what your purposes are for the holder. So these holders are, are pretty well known in the industry because they're the same holders they use for other uh, coins and numismatic currency and numismatica. Um, other, other, coin, or other currency that's placed in the same kind of holder, small bills or philately and things like that are all in there. So if you're using the holders that these slide down in and fit into, then they're more known. Um, right. or they're not more more known, but they're, they're what NGC guys are used to. So that's, they're just going with their standard stuff. Um, now, again, you brought up a good point. If you want to see the, the, um, the reverse and the obverse of your certificate simultaneously, and that's important to you, then this is what you get. Now, keep in mind that the um, reverse of the certificate or the inside of the certificate is the same no matter which certificate you get. This is not in any way, shape, or form a one-of-a-kind. Mm -hmm. The interior on every one of those is mass printed, printed exactly the same. It's only the obverse that matters because of the COA and the signature. That's the only part that actually matters. So the fact that NGC is showing you that is kind of nice, but as far as the actual what is special, right. PCGS has actually done just as great a job of sealing it up. And personally, I like the PCGS holders better. A, they're more streamlined and closer together. B, they're more rigid. The sonic welding makes them a much more secure device, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can see from the video or not. The welds on this are tack welded. They're not quite as firm. Um... On the actual, I don't know if I can blow this one, I can't get any bigger, but the actual welds, the way these are made, because they're semi-rigid, um, these holders have the potential, in my opinion, to allow damage to occur to the coin. Um, 
the coin also, or not coin, but the COA may also um, possibly, I hate to say it, but it's possible that it could be easier to maybe alter, maybe break the seal and remove it. We know that there are unscrupulous people out there that will, you know, take and put gas into things and they do all kinds of things to coins that have been graded. So you want to be very careful and make sure that you use the best that are out there. And, and I think for the money, PCGS has done a better job of building a protective holder. Um, although I will say both of these holders are very well made. I like the PCGS holders, as you can see from the differences on the, the thickness and the depth of the coins. The way the, the sonic welds are on this one are much better than the welds that are on this these are closer, more closely aligned to a lot of the inexpensive Canadian and Chinese counterfeit mm. uh, holders that are out there. Mm. They've copied this because the machines that do this are a lot less expensive. You'll notice that just from the edges of the coin, the finish on this is much smoother. It doesn't catch debris and dirt. So this is a personal preference. It's not to say anything positive or negative about either company. I'm not endorsing either one of them. Nobody give me, neither of them give me anything. I'm just saying from my point of view, I've always thought that the PCGS holders were just a little bit more streamlined, right. a little bit more rugged and industrial, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I feel more confident that this one is not likely to do anything. You know, for example, this COA won't shift at all, mm -hmm. whereas this COA is already bubbled up. Yeah. Um, as you can see, the the the, the well, I think I think the general there. consensus within the the coin community is a lot of them seem to prefer PCGS over NGC. I mean, and again, I'm not trying to play one over the other. Yeah, it's just that's also my the, take. the thing to remember if you are collecting for a collector's sake, you need to choose what you are best in love with. What do you enjoy the most when you come to collecting your coins? Mm -hmm. And if you've decided to grade. Select a grader that fulfills the desires and aesthetics that you're looking for and follow through with that and stay true to it. I have one of my very long-time clients that was for a very long time an NGC guy. Mm -hmm. He decided about a year ago that he preferred the holders and display materials that PCGS has come out with. He also has said that he has found more success when he goes to sell items that he's bought on the market that PCGS holders just seem to sell a little bit better. Right. So he decided to start selling off all of his NGC stuff. He's literally done exactly what I said, which is stick with one. So he's gone. He no longer is submitting to NGC. He's only submitting to PCGS. I've heard the same story the other direction from other people. So the moral of that story is choose the grading company that gives you the aesthetic you want because no dealer in the world is going to buy the coin solely on the holder it's in. Yes, PCGS and NGC are the gold standards in the, uh, in the coin grading world. Yes, the two of them come really close together on almost every single thing they do when it comes to the grade. Grading is subjective. It will always have an art to it. It is not just a science. So with that being said, when you are selecting which company you use, choose the one that fulfills your aesthetic, the things that you are looking for the most. If you like the weight and feel and hold of one over the other, that's who you should go with. Because when it comes to the secondary market, honestly, as a dealer... If this coin came in this holder and this holder and both coins had identical grading and identical eye appeal and I could see no reason why either coin should be graded better or worse than the other, I wouldn't pay any differently for it when I go to sell it. Which means when you get it evaluated for insurance purposes or replacement, it's the same thing. There's not going to be a disparity between the two coins. Both coins should hold primarily the same value. Mm -hmm. Now... So what is the difference? The difference is what do you like? Which do you want to hold on to? Which are you going to enjoy holding? You know, if you hold this coin and you don't like feeling the reading along the edge, you don't want this one. If you hold this coin, you think it's too slick and it might fold out, hold, might slide out and you want the rigidness of this coin, you go with this one. So it just comes down to that. And then again, like we said, with the grading on this particular coin that we're sending in to get graded, this particular coin, if you want to see the inside, you're not going to choose PCGS. If you want to see the uh, the inside of the coin, you're going to have to choose NGC. There's, right. there's no question. Yeah. On the other hand, if you, like me, the interior of the COA makes no difference because they're the same as 500 others. And I know that someday in the next year, someone's going to walk through my door with one of these coins open that they've put their fingers on mm. and that the COA is still present. Guess what? The coin, unfortunately, now has a lot less value. And I get to look at the inside of the COA all I want. <laughs> without having to worry about it. So, right. you know, I would choose, if it were me, personally, I would choose the PCGS because I like the holders better. But that's the the number one reason I'm choosing it is because I particularly like the aesthetic of that holder better. Right. So you have to make that decision. 
let's go back to our form for a minute. Now that we've talked about the differences, because we talked about what we're doing here and why we're doing this is to get those two things together. The COA certified and graded along with the coin certified and graded. So now we're going to actually fill out the details. This comes down here. You're going to fill this information out by putting in the quantity, the date, the denomination. So this is 1, 2019, $1. Leave that blank because this is U.S., okay? Reverse proof. Uh, uh, enhance reverse Enhance proof. reverse proof. I was trying to, I can't think of the word now. It's not the uh, hashtag. Is that right? No, not hashtag. Uh, uh, pound. <laughs> No, not pound, with a little dash. Uh, uh, oh, backslash? Backslash, yeah. Backslash COA. Um, now, this is going to come down to, um, do you want true view? You asked me earlier, are they going to put your coin online? Can you see a video or a picture of it? This is where you'd select true view if you wish to. If you selected the true view, if you selected the true view, then yes, they would put a picture of it online. If you don't select the true view, they would not. So for those of you at home who are filling this out, you have to select whether this is something you want to spend an extra 10 bucks on, okay? Variety attribution. So the answer is yes, this is a variety attribution. Boom, boom. Do we want first strike designator on there? I think it goes without saying that it's already a first strike. I don't think I need the words first strike typed up there for $18. And it's too late for first day. Right. Anyway. Yep. Yeah, so you, you don't want to mess with that. I would leave that blank, okay? Now... If you can see the read in here, it says, uh, complete for currently encapsulated coins. This isn't currently encapsulated, so you're going to ignore the grade and certificate number. You're not going to use minimum grade crossover because it's not a minimum grade. Um, this, is, this is important. This particular coin, you're sending in a, a sealed or maybe you opened it and looked at it coin, but you haven't touched it. You haven't done anything with it, so... This one, you're not going to have to necessarily put down the minimum grade. Also, the worry with this, and I tell people this is a debate, a lot of people will say, well, I don't want it graded if it's not going to grade a 64. Well, I would argue you should always just go ahead and leave that blank because you're already paying for it. And if you put minimum grade and it doesn't cross that line, it gets put into a body bag. So if you put down that you want the coin to grade a 69 or a 70 and the coin comes back as a 68, it does not get put into an encapsule. It'll come back in a soft plastic holder with a certificate, but it's not encapsulated because it didn't grade for you. Now you save five bucks. Uh, yeah. Get the thing in. Well, yeah. You've gone to all this trouble. Do it. Yeah. Declared value. Now, mm -hmm. this number here, guys, I'm going to circle this while you're watching. This is important. This is one of the reasons we hung on to this piece of paper. Your declared value is going to have a big part of what's going to happen with your insurance for the item, okay? We are not shipping internationally for our U.S. buddies, but if you are in Canada, you would be looking at this. If you are in, in Europa, you would be looking at this. And if you're in Timbuktu, Siberia, or somewhere on the moon, you would be looking at this. Today, we're looking at U.S., so we're going to look at the top. Okay. This number here at the top of this little graph okay, is the first thing you look at. How much is the coin value? Okay, well, guys, this coin right now is pretty close to a thousand bucks. So do we believe it's zero to a thousand or do we think it's a thousand and one to five thousand dollars? Well, I was told you should have the insurance on it that you'd be happy if it got lost. Correct. A good friend of mine who's an insurance agent which I guess does make him a little bit biased, will tell you that you should always insure so that when the in, the unforeseen happens, you don't feel a loss. It, it, insurance is just that. It is just in case. So if, God forbid, the postal delivery person who is handling your package happens to find the black hole that leads to the other universe and never comes back, you're going to have a slip of paper that says you insured this coin. The question is, do you want to receive an insurance value for $69 or do you want to receive an insurance value for at least $1,000? So, now, this is a little bit of a debate. Are you going to spend $22 bucks or $28? Bucks? I would spend the $28. Bucks. Yeah. 
Now that number I came up with is the next step down in the chart. So we, we've established that we want the coin to probably be over a thousand dollars. Yes. So the next step is I would look at this where it says one to four coins. Are you going to send anything else in with this one? This in this case I would say no because you're doing all this special stuff and you only want it to apply to that one coin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I will tell you there are things we can do. If you decide you want to send in seven or eight or nine coins to submit, but you don't want to send them all in this form, fill out another form. Put that into another container and put that into a box and ship one box. So you're only paying one-way shipping there. You'll still have to pay separate shipping back, but you'll save some shipping if you wanted to send in 10 or 12 or 15 coins. Make sure you fill out a separate form for each group that you send. So let's say she wanted to send in some of those absolutely gorgeous pieces that, that you guys have been picking up and that have been so highlighted on the, uh, on the blog. Um, I would say that Throwing a few of those in there and get graded isn't a bad idea since you're already getting stuff graded and you choose to do that. You're going to do it with a separate form and you can put them all on another form. Just remember, whatever you select on the form applies to everything on the form. Okay. So you wouldn't want to send in, um, let's say you've got a oh, 1878 seven tail feather that you think is going to grade out at you know a 65 or 66. You wouldn't want to put that on here because you don't want to spend 90 bucks to get the coin graded or 120 bucks to get the coin graded. You would put that on the other form, okay? So that's important. Now, if you had 10 or 5 or 15 of this exact same coin and you wanted them all treated exactly the same way, one form... Wouldn't do it at all. But then you would change this quantity from 1 to 15. All right. Okay? So let's say you're going to send in one of these coins. You're going to send in, on another form, you're going to send in five Morgans and three Peace Dollars and 15 Commemoratives. You could have each of those items on a separate line with a separate quantity, okay? And some of them you would true view, some of them you would not, some of them you would tribute, some of them you would not. But this applies to everything you put on this form. Okay, so we've established that our value on our coins are going to be over $1,000 because we think it's going to continue to be strong for a few weeks, we hope. So we know we're only sending one coin, so we have to look at the two numbers, and that comes up with 28 bucks. If you'd had five or more coins to 25, it'd be $33. And then you would add 25, per, uh, 25 cents for every coin over 26 coins at that point. Okay, so that is the expected value on the coin at that number. Now let's say you'd had 10 coins at $1,000, you're in the, the five to th 15,000, so you'd be up here, you'd be spending $41 because you'd have 10 coins with a total combined value of $10,000. Mm -hmm. we, we understand how to fill that out now, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so back over here. So we now know that the declared value on this coin, we're going to say, let's call it $1,200. I'm just picking a number. So if the coin got lost in the mail and you got a check from the U.S. Postal Service or from PCGS's insurance company for $1,200, bucks, would you cry? Yeah. So what would make, what would you not? Cry? No, but that's a fair price. N don't but say fair. It's insurance. You're paying for it. But but I want the coin. I don't want the money. Okay, but let's say they lost the coin. Is two thousand dollars going to make you happy? Yeah. Okay. So then you would write down two thousand dollars here. This was the point I was trying to make. It's inside this bracket, so it doesn't really make a big difference. It doesn't change anything. Now, if you said if you said I need six thousand dollars, now you're going up to the next level, and you have to spend more money. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this number here directly affects how much you're going to spend. Okay? So now we are going to step up here. We've done step number eight because we're done with all those, right? Notice mm -hmm. there's nothing else to add up on step number eight. We're going all the way to the top of the form here to step number nine now. So we have one coin. Okay? And the level where this says service level fee right here, we are going with express basic. Okay? So that is going to be $65, okay? So that'll translate one times 65. Last time I did the math was still 65, not 66. Now this is where if we had nine coins, we would put nine times 65, blah, okay? Now, this is where we're gonna have additional coins. Remember I said there might you might have some coins that would be different levels. Maybe you're at a show and you wanna do these as Show Express and these as not. That's when this stuff applies. You could have multiple levels, okay? Gold shield, are we going to apply the gold shield to this one? We said we were. Okay, so that's an additional $5. Oversized holder. Okay, so I've been told two different things. I've been told that this is not an oversized holder. It does not apply. This typically applies to uh, Carson City Morgan dollars, 
Ike dollars in the large holders, or holders that contain two or three items, such as a proof set, a mint set, that you want the entire thing to be encapsulated. I've been told by someone else that they may decide to treat it that way. If they do, they'll amend it and tell you that. Um, they'll send you an email informing you of the change if you missed that line, okay? I believe I've been told by two different people that, it, that one says they won't, one says they will. So if you get surprised by, hey, here's a $20 charge, they decided they want to charge for oversized. I don't think they're going to do that because you're already paying an awful lot for this one coin, so I think they're probably going to leave it alone, but I can't say I'm not PCGS. Now we have a handling fee. We didn't put that on there. They did. <laughs> yeah, it comes on there. Yeah, that's just for opening an envelope and closing an envelope, basically. Okay. Now, Collector's Club membership. Remember we said we had to join the membership, right? Mm -hmm. And what level membership did we decide to go with? Well, since we're paying for the coin and not using a voucher, I guess we did the silver. Okay, so we're at $69 for that membership. It's the cheapest one, and most people, yep. if they're only grading one coin... Right. So, now we have the return shipping fee. Um, return shipping fee, you have to see this form again. And they change this because I do it online, so it auto-fills it out for me. Um, okay, that was the $28 flat, so there's nothing different on there. So that comes down to we are paying a total of $28 for this coin, so that's just the $28 goes right here. Okay? Used to be on the old form, there was a line for the shipping and a line for the insurance. They were two different lines. They've combined them now. So I just wanted to make sure before I stated it, but there it is. Okay, estimated guaranteed premium fee, that doesn't apply to us. So now we're gonna add all this up. So, let's get out a calculator. Pardon me guys, I should have had this calculator out here. So we've got $65 for the grading. We've got $5 for the gold shield. We have $10 for the service fee. We have $69 for the Collector's Club membership because we weren't members already. We got the $28 for return shipping and insurance. So $177. Okay. So this number is going to go right here where it says total estimated charges, $177. Okay. So. So he forgot about the $15 charge for the encapsulated COA. And you put that on line two. And that brings the total to $192. And if you want to try for first strike, that's $18 more. So you put $33 in the second line. And that would be a total of $210. Don't forget to check the box where you added the coin. So do we, can we pay more to get it shipped back to us quickly? Is there a place for that? So you're all, that's part of what you're paying for with the Express. Um, okay. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll ship it to you. Um, used to be the um, Express was another line on here where you could do an Express or return shipping, and I think they've taken that away and they just included it in that. Um, that's why it's you know, so expensive. Um, the, um, they used to have a priority or a second day, and that comes down to the alternative shipping. Um, you can pay for the alternative return shipping if you wanted to up here under step three. Um, you would need to go online and prepay for all of that. So literally you would have an account number and all this stuff and they would charge it to your account from FedEx or Express Mail. You see how that works? So this is the other reason to use this alternative return shipping. And that's if you don't want to just let them handle it if you want to take charge and get it faster. Okay? Again, if you're paying for Express, you're going to get it back fast enough. I wouldn't stress over that part. Okay. okay. So, you spend $177. This is where they're going to ask for your payment method. Obviously, that's pretty self-explanatory. Credit card number, expiration date, and cardholder signature. Okay. So, now you've done all of this. You're going to also have to sign the bottom. I have had customers who've forgotten to sign down here, and they've gotten their coins back, and they weren't graded because they said, hey, you didn't complete the form. They specifically say here, PCGS will not be responsible for incomplete or inaccurate orders. Failure to complete a submission form will delay the order. Now, it used to say we'll cancel the order, but now it says delay. They're going to send you that email. Remember I said how important it was to put an email on there? If they don't put an email, they may try calling the phone number. They may not. I've heard people say that they don't call. They always email me when I have issues. So, um, Once you have all of this done, then you're going to need to package up your item and ship it. So, packaging your item. Talk about that for just a second. I ship 
literally more than 100 packages a day. So this one comes in a box that you shouldn't open. Yep, don't touch it. If you haven't already opened it, and I hope you didn't, if you haven't already opened it, leave it sealed. Step number two, go to your local post office and get a free flat rate shipping box. Or if you have an LGS guy like me that happens to always have extra flat rate mailers around, say, hey, can I have a flat rate mailer that will fit in? And I will hand you a flat rate mailer. Oh, and I don't know if I can reach. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not going to fit in that one. Well, there are two or three different sizes. Yeah. So, and I, you know, I, I guessed when I grabbed this one because it was already taped together. But you take a priority flat rate mailer. It doesn't matter which size it fits in. If it fits, it ships. Okay? Yep. Now, you want to put in some bubble wrap. If you don't have bubble wrap, go to the dollar store or ask your LGS guy who usually has boxes of extra mailing and bubble wrapping material around and we'll give you some. But if not, go to the dollar store. They sell it for a dollar for a little package of it. Okay, and that's all you'll need to stuff in there. Secure the box. This is important. This is literally your grand you're putting in a box and shipping somewhere. And let me tell you, remember I told you I ship more than 100 packages every day. I get four or five a week that the U.S. Postal Service has mistreated. They've drop kicked them. They've decided they wanted to use it for hockey practice. For some reason, the machine got hungry and decided to eat half the top of the envelope, whatever. So package it tightly. Tape. Clear packing tape is the best thing you can use. Packing tape everywhere. Okay. I would recommend you tape all of your edges. Again, it's a cardboard box, guys. This thing isn't made of steel. Things happen. They get jostled around. Okay. So, uh, clear packing tape. Make sure when you put your label on or you fix your label that it's nice and clear. There is a place on here where the United States Postal Service would like you to put the label. You don't have to use that. I will tell you they will take it as long as the label's on the top somewhere. But they want it on the top of the box because that's how they scan them. So, then you're going to include your submission with it. Now, for me, I make a photocopy. I like to photocopy stuff. <laughs> okay, that's why I bought a photocopier. So, I photocopy stuff. If you don't have one, run down to the local library. They're 10 cents or your local print shop. You know, 5 to 10 cents for a copy. There's no big deal. Copy that first page. And then I like to date it when I shipped it. Now, you're going to ship this with tracking. So, staple the receipt to this piece of paper. And now you know when you sent it in and how long it should take to get back. Okay, so we've talked about all that. If you happen to be sending in something that is not this particular coin we're talking about, a couple pieces of advice about PCGS. The same pretty much applies for the other two. Put the coin into a 2x2 two two plastic flip. And I don't have one laying around here on the counter to show you. I should have grabbed one. Put the coin or object into a 2x2 two two plastic flip. If, it's, if it is uh, scripophilia, numismatica, currency, something paper-wise, put it into a uh, top loader only. Don't tape it. Don't staple it. You can rubber band them um, because the more of that stuff you do, the less likely they are to treat it with care when it gets there and they may even turn them away. Don't ever staple them and don't put them into self-sealing 2 by 2s and don't put them into uh, 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 um, regular 2 by 2s and staple them. No staples, no tape, no binder clips, no paper clips, you know, and just rubber band the coins together, or I have on occasion um, put them into um, a long box nested up against each other, okay? Now, I typically put mine inside a little bag. Uh, we use a lot of penny sleeves around here. Um, these are actually great. They will also work. Um, but again, you know, if I take a 2 by 2 and I slide, I put it in the 2 by 2 and slide it in there, that's all I do. I, I just recommend using the vinyl 2x2 two two flips. They're the best thing in the world. The cardboard flips aren't going to stay closed. They're not going to do any good. And the vinyl 2x2s two will do just fine. Put it in the envelope, fold it over in half. It'll get there safe and sound. Okay. Um, once you send off your coin, now you pray to the um, gold and silver gods that the guys who get your coin love it just as much as you do and that it gets a number 70 grading or in this case, it gets sealed in it like it's supposed to. You get this beautiful coin back and... To those of you who are doing this with a coin that they purchased directly from the mint, congratulations, you hit on a, a wonderful gold mine that those of us in this world uh, of numismatics pray happens to us every day and that you were one of those lucky guys who got one. For those of you who didn't get one that way and bought it on a secondary market, I hope you were able to buy it economically because right now these particular coins are on fire. 
Uh, every dealer in the world loves to have them and wants to buy them. Every collector is trying to snarf them up. And of course, the limited number of them that are available in the world means that right now, these coins are literally the treasure hunter's dream. So, they really are. Yeah. Really Grab are. a hold of it and get it while you can. And, and congratulations well, on your find. Would you have? would you think that they should wait if they didn't get one? To let maybe it die down a little? Or do you think it's not going to die down? So here's my piece of advice on that. I would approach that from two sides of the coin. As with anything else, remember I am not a financial analyst. I am not a financial advisor. I am a coin collector and bullion dealer just like you. So mm -hmm. from my self-serving standpoint, if I were going to purchase the coin for my collection and I wanted the coin now and I didn't care about money, buy one. Because who knows how long they're going to be available. The pragmatist in myself, the reality guy, says, hey, this is hot right now. This is the beanie baby of today. <laughs> beanie baby. In five years, may not be a beanie baby anymore. So, in five years, is this coin still going to be a $1,200 coin? Could be. I'd like to remind everybody that there is the possibility that it might be treated just like the Carson City release during the Nixon administration. Those coins had $9 worth of silver in them. They were selling them for $35 and $45 during first and second releases, and everybody was scarfing them up and couldn't get enough of them. And then they kind of died down after about a year and a half. And suddenly, they were issuing them at even lower prices. So for a little while, they dipped back down. Now, right. a few years later, they're two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500. So if these go that same way, you're not going to lose money. Either way you do it, whether you wait or whether or not you buy one today. I would say that if money is an issue for you and you are, are concerned or you want to do it somewhat on the frugal, wait a month or two. The reason I say that is Christmas is upon us, folks. This is November coming up on Thanksgiving um, as we film this, depending on when you see it. People are buying things right up now that are also not necessarily numismatists, not necessarily collectors, mm -hmm. and there's always some of that what I like to call auction hype going on, or the uh, eye candy impulse instant buy. Flips. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the investors who are instant flipping. There are the dealers out there that are buying 10, 12, 50, 75, 100 of these at a time, and they're going to buy them today and they're going to sell them for 100 bucks more than they're paying for them just because they want to flip them, and right now the demand is high. In a couple of months, those people who are hungry for them probably will have got them. You know, the ones that are hungry and have buckets of money that have the key to the vault, so to speak. And they'll buy one for a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred extra bucks today than they would pay if they waited a month or two. Now, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But my personal feeling on the subject is if you're not using it for a special purpose, like a holiday gift, you know, uh, Christmas, Ramadan, Kwanzaa, whatever you happen to, to aspire to believe in, or if you're just buying it for a seasonal celebration or just got bit by the silver bug and have to have one of these, you know, go out and buy it. But And it's not going to be a bad purchase. It's not a bad purchase, not a bad investment. Now, I would say you're not buying it with, that, with investment in mind, though. If somebody called me today and said, will you get me one of those? I'll say, yes, I will. But keep in mind that today it says 900 to 1200 bucks is the market price. Expect to spend 12 to 14 to actually buy it. Mm -hmm. And then three months, six months down the line, when the hype has slid down just a little bit, you might be back down to the $1,200 line, $900 line. Where that is really is going to depend on how long the demand continues. I don't ever see this coin as being one that is going to devaluize below, you know, the, the $69 that people paid for. That's, that would be ridiculous, though it's possible. I mean, we all know the story of the 1970 proof sets, the 71 proof sets that people were buying for twenty nine ninety five because they all thought they were getting a type one or type two and now they're worth you know five bucks, but that isn't the case of this. This is a silver item. It's a, 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 a proof strike. It's with certi signed certificate. I believe these are going to be more along the lines of a collector's item. That's kind of like a Morgan dollar in that it has all the right bells and whistles. It's mm -hmm. got eye appeal. It's got collector appeal. It's got silver appeal. It's got uniqueness. And if you're lucky and smart enough to do this. It's got a certificate with it that says not only is this the real thing, but it's the real thing that's been checked out by lots of people. And so, slow mintage. Low mintage. Yeah, you, you're, you're checking all the right boxes all right. here. There's nothing that makes this a non-collectible coin. Right. This coin I don't believe will ever devaluate you know, significantly below that. Now, I, if you wanted me to predict a number, I don't like predicting numbers. You guys know that. Those of you who have listened to me and watched me, I don't really like predicting numbers. 
but I will when I'm prompted. I think the magic number on this coin really is probably eight, nine hundred bucks in about six months. That's what I see. In about six months, eight, nine hundred bucks is probably going to be where it's going to level out at. If I'm right, congratulations, I'll break my own arm patting myself on the back because nobody else will thank me for it. All the dealers will be mad because I was right because they're all buying them right now at nine hundred and a thousand dollars thinking they're going to be twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. The reality is what that coin's going to do is going to be mostly up to you guys in the real world out there. How many of you are snarfing them up and how many of you ever let them go? If you hang on to them for 10 years, that means in six months they're not on the market and the market will be up and I'll be completely wrong and they might be $3,000. Right. So, yeah, I hear quite a few people are keeping them. I mean, yeah, there was a poll by one poll. of the YouTubers and 55% of the people said they were keeping them. So if you think about that, if the po let's pretend for the moment that the known population was a thousand of these coins. Uh, Let's say there was 1,000 and 55% keep them. That's 550 of them out of circulation that have already said they're not going to sell them. And then in reality, there's probably another 10 or 15% that didn't say that, but they really won't sell them. So now you've got, what's that, 30% of the population is available for 100% of the population to buy. So that means that demand will outweigh supply and the coin will be, the, the, the value of the coin will be driven up or at least maintained right. the same. And I also right. hear people that are like, I don't want to sell it. I want to keep it, but these prices are crazy. How do you hold on to something when you can flip it for that much money? Well, that, that, that comes into the, the uh, collector side, or not collector, the, uh, the, the investor side of it, the, all those dealers that are doing just that, that are flipping it. I'll be honest, if I had won one from the Mint, I would probably be contacting my favorite people. I, I seem to know this guy from Silver Steelers that I would probably call. And say, I have an extra one. Would you like to buy it? And I would sell it to him for a very reasonable price, not because I'm a, ca I'm, I'm a crook and a capitalist, but because I think that one of my collectors would more value that and I would gain more in loyalty than I would out of sitting on that coin and trying to make it a, a $2,000 coin. And I'm, although everyone knows I love ASEs, I love them just as much as, as the next guy who likes Silver Eagles. To me, the value of the COA is in its saleability, not because I want to have a signed you know, right. early edition. I actually don't collect signed early editions. That's not my thing. So I wouldn't buy it for the collectability. I would buy it to give it as a gift. Um, I would buy it as something to make a profit on. But again, that comes down to do you choose to do that as a collector, as a dealer? And the dealer side of you would flip it. The collector side of you would keep it. And you know why I bought it. Well, absolutely, because you were brilliant like the rest of us have known you are for years. <laughs> no, because it's pretty. <laughs> well, okay, that, that, you're the collector. You're right, but uh, yeah, I was I was trying to also remind everybody that sometimes a woman's intuition is something you should follow. So, but uh, well, listen, uh, appreciate you going through all the rounds and letting us know uh, how to get one of these submitted and all and all the information on it. Lots um, of fun. The yeah. follow up, of course, will be lots of fun when we get to when the box comes Won't back. It do the video with the unveiling. Right. We, should, we should keep the form and say, this is what we sent in and this is what we got back. So, Well, listen, uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah, yeah. I, looks like I've been filming for an hour. <laughs> well, to all you folks out there in, in the YouTube world, we certainly appreciate you following the, uh, the Steeler and, and supporting winning uh, in all the things they do. So remember, keep watching the videos, and I appreciate them coming in and sharing their time and energy with us also. So. Well, we thank you for your time, Kurt. Much appreciated. Absolutely. You're going to bring this one to a close. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. We'll see you on the next video.